This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edge of Face Attorney Investigations, everybody! It's been a while for us, but not for you. Thanksgiving break. Woo, woo! Yeah! Shout outs to my, uh, the Americans who started the, the Pilgrims who started America. <laughs> the, the Americans That's... who started the Pilgrims who started America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Americans went days. over from Europe to found America, right? That's how it worked. Anyhow. Yeah. We're continuing. With turnabout reminiscence, we're cross-examining Gumshoe in court in front of the judge. Which will be fun. This will be interesting. So, yeah, I came down here to this courthouse on Detective Bad's orders. So was it really Detective Bad who called you down here? You bet it was, pal! I was left in charge of the precinct while everyone was out and this call comes in. I want you down here in one minute flat, he said. Well, I thought this was my big chance, my first case, so I made a mad dash down here. Although, I couldn't exactly get here in a minute flat. So how long did it take you? Um, about ten minutes, I guess. <laughs> ten minutes? I don't know how far the precinct is from the courthouse, Maybe. though. And what was Detective Bad doing when you finally made it? He was waiting for me down on the first floor in the entranceway, pal. I feel like they should be close. As soon as I got here, he ordered me to stand guard in front of lobby number two. We apparently have at least one penalty taken out. Yeah. From last time. Because I forgot to save state or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> And by he, you mean... Detective Bad, of course! And this being my first time at the courthouse? Uh, he also walked me up to the third floor hallway in front of the defendant lobbies. And did you meet anyone along the way? Hmm, well... Just as we entered the hallway, we ran into Miss Yu. When we, when he heard that Miss Yu, uh, fr from Miss Yu, that Mr. Faraday was not to be interrupted, that's when Detective Bad told me to stand guard in front of the hallway, pal. So far, Detective Gumshoe's testimony is matching up with Detective Bad's. I, yeah. From that time on until I heard the gunshot, I was in the hallway the whole time. Hold it. You claim to have been in that hallway the whole time. However, it is not a fact that, is it not a fact that you did something while you were in the hallway? Of course I did something! I guarded the door to lobby number two, pal! What else? Very well then. And what exactly does guarding that door entail? Um... Well, to put it simply... Oh, I know! It was my job to stand in front of the door without moving an inch. Oh? Detective Gumshoe, you mean to tell me that you didn't take a single step away from the door to lobby number two? Is that really what you wish to testify to the effect of? You got it, pal! <laughs> I didn't take a single step away from that door, just like I was ordered not to. Even I remember that. <laughs> yeah, Even I remember he was he... eating De Little Debbie cakes. Yeah, the... because he had a pay raise of like $5. No, pay bonus. Or pay bonus, That's yeah. even worse. That's like a one-time $5 gift and not a permanent $5 an <laughs> no. hour raise. I forgot Francisco was with us. Yeah. Well, why is everyone so quiet all of a sudden? Because we are all in shock <laughs> and in stupidity. awe of your utter stupidity. <laughs> Scruffy, you're going to lie. At least tell us a more believable one. Yowch! So but I, I'm not lying. I should hurry up and bring this insipid testimony to a close. Duh. And until I heard the gunshot, I didn't take a single step away from the lobby number two door. I'm only going to ask you one more time, Detective Gumshoe. Are you sure you stood in front of the door to lobby number two the entire time? No. Yup! After I was told by <laughs> Detective Bad, uh, I would stood guarded for that door without a single break. So, so believe me when I say I was in that hallway the whole time already, pal. <laughs> Why did everyone go quiet all of a sudden again? Apparently someone has a bit of trouble reading between the lines. What's that supposed to mean? I don't- Be quiet! Youch! I should hurry up and bring this insipid testimony to a close. On my honor as a detective, I swear it wasn't me, pal. Would you also be willing to swear that there was no one else in that hall besides you? What are you talking about? I just swore to you that I was doing my job, pal. Didn't, um, Kay go and buy- Something at the vending machine and then kick us in the butt or something? <laughs> yes, yes, she did, as a matter <laughs> okay. of fact. Oh, then what are you acting so nervous for? <laughs> what? I'm not nervous at all, pal. Anyway, not a single person other than myself was in that hall the whole time. Mm -hmm. I should just let it go. 
pursuing this train of thought at this time would just be a waste of time. To have such a foolishly foolish contradiction. In such a foolishly foolish testimony is just plain old foolish. Indeed. However, in the pursuit of the perfect investigation, I'm afraid we have to deal with it. By squashing it under the weight of the evidence. Alright, so... You didn't take a single step You're away from the doorway. Even though we had, like, a picture evidence of you... Even though we have your <laughs> fingerprints. He's like, I was on one foot and I made a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to make a lunch while on one foot, pal? <laughs> and I purposefully smeared my hand on the bench just no, to make it No, that's what suspicious. I was saying. It's like he did a lunch for and he went... Oh, I thought you said lunch. No, I was making lunch on my bench with one foot in front of the door, pal. No. I have an objection. What is it, pal? Detective Gumshoe, I wonder if you might recognize this from somewhere. Hey, it's one of those feeds! The courthouse special Swiss rolls, right, pal? Hmm, precisely. In that case, I suppose that you also recall the sullied hallway bench. Hey, you know what? I think it was probably me that did that. Detective Gumshoe, you know you can't go around dirtying up the courthouse like this. You inconsiderate, slovenly pig! Eek! Uh, I promise to clean it up later, I swear! Now then, shall we get down to business? About the fact that you didn't move a, even a single step from in front of that door? Is that re If that really were the case, then how were you able to buy a pack of Swiss rolls? Back! Very carefully. Furthermore, if you didn't move a single step from in front of that door, how did you manage to get the bench dirty with your grubby hands? That was loud. Youch! It appears that Francesca's whip can do much more damage than my words alone can. Uh, all right, I confess, pal. I was hungry, so I bought a pack for myself. Okay? I thought I'd get chewed out again if anyone found out about me eating on the job. So I didn't want to say anything. I've eaten on the job before. Well, unfortunately for you, I saw you do the whole dastardly deed. From the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was using the toilet, because there's a window right in front of the toilet. No, not even the terrible toilet. terrible design. The urinal. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's I was using those interchangeably, sorry. Oh. I clearly saw you buying a pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm sorry for lying. This <laughs> poor courthouse. But, but that's all I'm sorry for, you got that? Because I'm not holding up anything else back. That last statement. It may sound like it makes sense. However, there is something I don't quite believe about it. Are you sure you're not withholding further information from us? Huh? Uh, of course not! I've got nothing else to hide, pal! Hm. Oh, if only that were true, Detective Gumshoe. B -b 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 but it is true, pal! I swear, there's nothing else! Maybe he doesn't realize it himself. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure you're aware of the price of a pack of Swiss oh. rolls, correct? Huh? Um, remind me again, pal. That vending machine out in the hallway is selling packs of two Swiss rolls for six dollars a pack. Still less expensive than oh, Disney Oh, I have an idea of what happened then. Gumshoe goes over to the vending machine and is like, Oh crap, I only have five dollars. Sees small child. Hey, can you lend me a dollar? <laughs> she runs all the way over to Edgeroom. She's like, can I have a dollar? <laughs> and then she kicked us the in the butt later. Yeah, later. well, to be fair, she's just there's a random dude who she probably doesn't trust being like, Can I have a dollar so I can eat? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, according to you, you didn't have any cash on you until you received your five dollar annual bonus check. Isn't that right? <sighs> Let me ask then, how did you manage to, how did you manage to purchase a pack all by yourself? <laughs> Can you provide me with a proper explanation to that? Ah! I told you, I bought it by myself, pal! There wasn't anyone else in that hallway with me. So there's no one I could who could have helped me buy it. Wait, don't tell me! You got some kind of proof that there was someone else in the hallway, don't you? Correct. As if you could! I mean, what are the chances of that? Wait, you do? Of course I do. What? How? What proof do I have that there must have been someone else there in the hallway? Okay. Okay. Oh, the balloon? Yeah. Take that! What the heck is that? Heh, <laughs> I knew you didn't really have anything. You prosecutors are all the same, always lying to people. You should stop, you know? Wow. No! I refuse to be lectured by the likes of you, detective. 
Miles, how long do you plan on being strung along by this moron detective? I have no intention of falling for his lie because there was definitely a second person. Because if he was truly alone all alone all along, then that piece of evidence should yeah, not this exist. This is a day of flubbing lines, it seems. Give me a break. I haven't recorded stuff in a while. I haven't re I've recorded stuff recently. I just haven't recorded Phoenix Wright at all recently. Right. Oh man. Um. Oh yeah. Blocked by the girl. That's it. So I was like, she had the balloon as well. Hey, you showed that to me not two seconds ago, pal. Ah, uh, I think you're under the mistaken impression that I bought this pack of rolls. Wait, if you didn't buy it, then that means you must have stolen it, you thief! Whoa, I would never do such a thing! All you liars are the same! You started as thieves! You're under arrest, pal! <laughs> I believe you mean to assert that all thieves start out as liars. And in that case, what does that say about you, detective? Dirty! This particular Swiss roll was dropped by a certain someone. Oh! There were two rolls in this package. You ate one of them. But then you gave the other one to a certain other person, didn't you? No, 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 no way, pal! You've got it all wrong! I ate both of them! Oh, boy. Not today. It would appear that we've caught you at last. Hey! Don't you dare do anything bad to that girl! It would appear that the, they do know each other after all. So, why do you continue to come up and kick me? Have I wronged you somehow? I have a name and it's K! K what? K Faraday! K Faraday? Are you perhaps Mr. Faraday's daughter? I'm not a you, I'm a K! Ugh! K, you know, good little girls don't kick other people. Especially not hard enough to leave big nasty bruises like the way you do. Well then you shouldn't have put Gummy under arrest, mister! G gummy? My guess is that she's talking about Detective Gumshoe. She's like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> she's got the weird like kung fu pose going yeah. on. Oh yeah, she looks like she just hopped out of Street Fighter when they yeah. can't stand still. <laughs> They're like moving back and forth. Basically. <laughs> he killed your father? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a cute nickname you've given him. Gummy didn't do anything wrong. Kate. It appears that I will need to speak with her in a bit more detail. I forgot what voice I gave for her because she was like... She was 16, and now she's No, like no, eight. but like, as an 8-year-old, she only appeared a couple times. Later, losers! I'm, <laughs> I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> no, Edgeworth's too good for Taco Francis, Bell. Yeah, he's way too good for Taco Bell. Why are you following me? Well, I'm a whole head taller than so, you. this was something I was thinking about in my brain earlier. Um, who of the two would be more likely to go to prom? Edgeworth or Francisca? <laughs> Definitely Francisca. You think? Yeah. I think she would intimidate the crap out of all guys. I didn't say she'd get a date. Or if she- Wow! No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. She'd be, uh, she'd be like Azula who, like, gets the date in that one episode and it's, like, really weird. <laughs> we will dominate the Earth! <laughs> yeah, okay. We love quoting Avatar in this. Avatar is great. Francisca, what do you make of this? Yes, what is it? Notice anything? That girl, she seems to know that scruffy detective. Maybe she knows something about him that we don't. Agreed. However, she seems to be rather uncooperative at the moment. She's like a stray alley cat. Alley cat. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what would happen if we fed her. Hmm, perhaps I will try feeding her. She's not a bird! <laughs> cra -cra -cra -cra. It appears that we've caught you red handed eating a Swiss roll. Back! Look, I'm sorry about lying he, to you, pal! Is he pointing his, in his ear? <laughs> <laughs> Detective, you have tons of earwax. Also, we caught you eating Swiss rolls. <laughs> and do you have nothing else to say? Sure do! It was so fluffy and sweet and big! Ugh. Ah, look it was at, perfection, okay, pal. Oh, I mean the Swiss sprite, roll. Not look at the his sprite on the TV versus. Look at how terrifying Gumshoe looks when he laughs. <laughs> and Trip's like holding up his fist, like, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> he would, though. And, to and totally worth every penny of my bonus. I see. Well, good for you, detective. I can't believe it, but it's almost funny when a fool is this unbelievably foolish. Okay. <laughs> Your Honor. Judge. Oh, dear. <sighs> what is the matter, Your Honor? I claim to hand down fair verdicts, but I unfairly cast suspicion on the big fella. If this had been a trial just now, I would have destroyed his life! Yeah. I- 
I am the guilty one. I could never be attached. <sighs> we all make mistakes, Your Honor. To err is human, to forgive divine, as they say. Although, if you were to make a mistake during a trial, then that would be quite unforgivable. You're not helping. <laughs> now then, Kay. She's like a stray cat. I wonder if I should feed her something. Here, eat this bag of blood! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would give her the balloon or something, at least. I mean, it's obvious- Eat gumshoes bonus check! <laughs> He doesn't have it anymore, he spent it! <laughs> Eat the crime scene notes. Eat the gun. Eat the knife. Ew. Eat this people, bag of blood. There are people who do that. Yeah, that's appropriate to hiss at that. She swatted it back at me. Miles, I demand that you do something to calm her down this instant! I wonder if I should feed her something. I'm terrible for feeding her the bag of blood. <laughs> Okay, I promise to give this to you if you calm down. Oh! A Swiss roll! That is a shirt that is too small for her. She looks like she hopped out of Kingdom Hearts. Nah, she doesn't have nearly enough zippers for that. No, but she looks across between, like, the great Yuffie and, like, some <laughs> chick. She's not from Kingdom Hearts. You know I that, know, right? But She's from I, Final I Fantasy. I know, but that's what I think of, because I don't play Final Fantasy. Not Although, I started- this is a funny story. <laughs> I started playing Final Fantasy on one of my friend's, um, PS4s at college. Is this this 15 where you have the car? No, it's not. I think it's, like, eight or something but it was like what's the name of your guy i'm like ladies man <laughs> so like every well, time describe like, the main character is he brown spiky hair uh no he has blonde hair is he cloud might be cloud if so that's seven and that has cloud and yuffie in it oh okay well anyway and i named him ladies man so now it's always like oh my gosh ladies man he plays soccer or something are you thinking 10 maybe I'm, are I you titus you yeah, said that might be 10. Okay. It's a blonde-haired <laughs> anime you, boy. You want to play Blitzball, man. <laughs> you have, have you played Final no, Fantasy No, but Link has. <laughs> oh, okay. It's really boring. It really belongs to you, though, doesn't it? Oh, you're going to get so much hate in the comments for that. <laughs> Final sorry. Fantasy 10 is, like, universally boring. Here's the thing. I, mm, Final <laughs> Fantasy, I just need to get into it at some point. Yeah. I was saving it for Daddy. Yeah. Oh my. Your father, he's... Ah! Don't you dare say another word, pal! She doesn't know yet! Thanks for watching out for me, Gummy. But I... I already know about Daddy. I overheard the guards talking. About how Daddy's... He's... Not here anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't protect him. Okay. I'm not gonna cry! I'm not gonna... Oh. Cry! It's alright. Let it all out. Your father just passed away after all. I, my yeah. I myself was also involved in a case at this courthouse when I was a young child. A case in which my father, who was a defense attorney, passed away. All of my dreams of becoming a lawyer were crushed into fine ash on that nightmarish day. But then Von Karma opened the elevator doors <laughs> and brought him to justice. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> took Edge of Home on his John Deere tractor. <laughs> Come! <laughs> I live on a farm. <laughs> how, how old was Edgeworth then, actually? Because how old would Francisca have been? Like Edgeworth four? was like eight. Yeah, so she would have been like three or four. Yeah. Even now, the wound festers deep in the depths of my soul. Ever since that incident, I've dedicated myself to locking away every criminal I can. And now, to have this happen right in front of me. This mm. child. I feel a certain shared fate, a common bond between us. Miles Edgeworth, what sort of gentleman are you? Are you going to just stand there and watch a lady cry? Ah, oh, you're right. Sorry about that. Okay, here, how about we use this handkerchief here and dry your little eyes? Uh... <laughs> no! My cravat! Don't blow your nose on that! <laughs> Shot. I feel better now. Thanks. Well, she perked up real fast. 
Do you, you have nails on your Oh no, it's the same she thing. She can cause any craziness. <laughs> he just saw this like girl like break down crying. He's just like, oh, I hate myself. That's the real reason Edgeworth never wears that cravat again or the outfit again. He's just <laughs> like, I have little girl snot all over. And it. I can't get it dry, clean. <laughs> it's got too many embroidery on it. Okay, are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'm already all right. I really like her theme song. It's great. Somehow, I highly doubt that, but I'm not going to push it. I promised Daddy I'd never cry in front of strangers. And you're a good kid, aren't you, Kay? You always keep your promises, right? No! <laughs> That's right. I like the little Even bow she I does. Even if I can't see Daddy anymore, I'm still going to keep all my promises. You're a very brave girl, Kay. You're a very good child for keeping the promises you made to your papa. I'll even testify that you didn't cry just for you. The judge is like, I, I'm right here. <laughs> Thank you very much, lady. Huh, it's nothing. I'm only telling the truth, after all. It would appear that because her father was a respected prosecutor, Francisca is sympathetic to Kay's feelings. And also that kind of makes sense, because once her father's uh, dead, Francisca's all about fulfilling promises, too. That, that's true. Oh, Daddy showed this to me before. Well, he was a prosecutor too, so it's only natural that he had one as well. Daddy would pin this badge on me a lot just for fun. Hmm, pinning a prosecutor's badge on a child for fun. Daddy said that if I, if he put it on his clothes, a scary prosecutor would get mad. <laughs> that's weird for Bradford on karma. He also said that scary prosecutors said it was more fashionable not to wear it. I wonder who that scary prosecutor could be. I wonder, could KB be talking about Mr. Von Karma? Mr. Von Karma. Nobody calls him Mr. Von Karma. You go to the, you go to like his <laughs> holiday party and it's like, oh, Prosecutor Von Karma, thank you so much for inviting us over. <laughs> of course. Of course. My parties are the best. <laughs> Only the best holiday parties for the best of guests. <laughs> no, I want to see that. <laughs> Someone make like a fan game, which is Mr. Von Karma's holiday party. <laughs> Would he have there? The best! No, but like, what kind of food would be the best? Pure steak! <laughs> I got Chick fil A for everybody! <laughs> I'm immediately thinking of, okay, remember when we went to that. Or you could do what Donald Trump did and just be McDonald's, the greatest American food. No. <laughs> remember when we went to, we went to this like a holiday party a while ago. I think we went a few years in a row. They had that video game machine in their basement. Yeah! Okay, they had a chocolate fondue fountain. Oh, of course we have that. Von Karma always has the chocolate fondue font. <laughs> hey, Kay, you want to see this? It's a genuine handgun. What the heck are you doing reminding her of her father's death, pal? I didn't think of that. I just thought it was a really cool gun. She may look all happy, but she's really hurting deep down inside, you know? So have a heart and be more sensitive, okay, pal? Wow. I'm sorry. For once, this detective is actually the voice of reason. Okay, about this. Huh? Are you giving it to me? Um, but... I promised Daddy that I wouldn't take things from strangers. I'm sorry. It's alright. I wasn't intending to give it to you anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guess I thought wrong. Miles, even if you show that to her, she isn't going to magically know all about it. I suppose you're right. You know what else she looks like? She looks like a reject from WarioWare. Touched. <laughs> like, She's basically it's like Cat, Cat Anna Cat, or Cat Anna and Kay. <laughs> Cat Anna and Kay. Well, it's Cat Anna because it's Katana. Oh my gosh. You never knew that? <laughs> I only just made that connection. Kay, what kind of person was your father? Daddy was the hero of justice. Phoenix Wright? No. <laughs> no. His job was to catch all of the bad people in the world. Right now, Phoenix is goofing off in art school. That's right, he went to art school! <laughs> That's the thing that always, like, blows my mind with law, is if you want to be a law student, you can basically major in whatever the heck you want in your undergrad, and then if you just get the LSAT score or whatever, mm -hmm. then you're good. So to you, a prosecutor is a hero of justice, huh? I suppose we are, in a sense, as we are the ones who seek guilty verdicts for criminals. Plus, you know what? Whenever I came to the courthouse, Daddy would buy me my absolute favorite treat, Swiss rolls. Oh? I want to be a hero of justice someday, just like Daddy. That didn't work out for her. So I've been working really hard. That's why I became a thief. That's why I became the Yadagorasu. <laughs> I see. And what have you been working hard on? I've been working hard to keep all of the promises Daddy and I made together. Promises, Kay. A promise notebook. 
May I take a look inside, Kay? Sure, okay. It appears to be an exchange diary of sorts between father and daughter. Mr. Faraday's writing conveys a sense of the kind of man he was. This little notebook just might come in handy later. Can we page through it? Let's see. Thank <laughs> you for showing it to me, Kay. Let's Is take a look, see. Yes! Yes. Case promises today. Promise one, never take things from strangers. Promise two, never go anywhere with a stranger. Very good advice. Yep. Promise three, always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Also good advice. Yeah, usually. Promise yeah. four, never cry in front of strangers. Well, that's I'm, not a problem. There's, there's nothing wrong with crying in front of strangers. What if yeah. you have, like, a horrible day? Like, right now, she lost her dad. You I've could had, absolutely cry I've in front of people. I've had terrible days and I've cried in front of strangers. <laughs> or, like, what if you're on, like, an airplane? You can't just, like, abandon your seat. You gotta I gotta cry. Turn them out! Or, like, I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Promise always five, always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. Okay. That, that's I, a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Daddy's job is to be, make sure everyone follows the rules. Okay, be a good girl and promise that you'll keep your promises to me, okay? Love your daddy. That's sweet. I don't agree with in number four, but... In reality, that's not her dad that wrote that. He's just someone else. <laughs> it was Paul Karma. No. Promises Von are very important. Von Karma would not be that nice with the promises. Von Karma would be like, don't be an idiot. Rule number one, don't be a fool. Rule number two, always achieve perfection. <laughs> Rule number three, don't fail. <laughs> Rule number four, take a spa break every once in a while. Rule number five, learn how to drive. <laughs> a tractor. <laughs> Thank you for showing this to me. I hope you'll continue to work hard and become a hero just like your father. I'm going to try. Hey Kay, so I'm a detective that catches the bad people, right? That makes me a hero too. Yeah, you're really cool too, Gummy. Yeah, aren't I, Kay? <laughs> what is with the two of them? Uh, I hand down the verdicts of justice, so that makes me a hero too. <laughs> yes, and thanks to your oh-so-heroic testimony, you almost painted that detective as a vile criminal and sent him off to jail. That's what we call the pot calling the kettle black, Francisca. You were like, Jarrest him! He's definitely Jarrest killed. Jarrest him? Jarrest him. That's what you <laughs> oh, said. Like arrested. Jurassic, but just Jarrest him. I was, I was just trying to say arrest and jail him at the same time. Yeah, just <laughs> arrest him. I like that. Oh, oh, I'm really so sorry about that. Gummy's not a bad man, okay? What's with her, like, bald fist? It's like, it's, bald it's like. Fist. It, Bald's fist, like she's balling her fists together. Oh. It's it's like the toads when they went in double dash. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Or or I don't know, when you get ready to punch, you ball your fists. But if that's like this. This she's doing it like she's curving them as well. So it's like Ree. maybe she's like a thief, like in Fire Emblem, where they hold their swords backwards and they do a lot of weird stuff. That is weird. That poor judge. He's being treated like a vile criminal rather than a hero of justice. It appears that you and Detective Gumshoe are good friends, Kay. Yeah, we're friends. In that case, would you mind telling me a little more about him? So I take it that you ran into Detective Gumshoe earlier. Yep. I was on my way to see Daddy when I saw Gummy standing there. He was standing in the hallway staring really hard at the vending machine, so I said hi. And when was this? Uh? Oh. Um, before everything got crazy? How long were the two of you together? Um, we only talked for a little while. And then we went on our own ways. That's right, pal! Kay and I only talked for a little while, and that's it! Oh, which means... We have now confirmed that Kay was in the hallway during the recess, isn't that right? Back, You got me! I told you to stop picking on Gummy, mister! Hmm. <laughs> Very well, then. I'll just have to speak with the good detective in private later. Swiss rolls. Were you the one who bought this pack of Swiss rolls, Kay? Um, well... I didn't really have a lot of money. And I somehow made a dollar out of all the pennies and quarters I had. But that still wasn't enough, and I really, really wanted one. Come to think of it, she did come and ask me to exchange a handful of change for a dollar. And that's when you came and asked me to change your money, correct? Yeah! Thanks a bunch for doing that, mister! Sure, and thanks for kicking me in the butt after I did that! <laughs> but let me ask you, even with that dollar, you still didn't have enough, correct? Um, well, that's why... Hey! If you bully K anymore, I'm gonna have to arrest you, pal! Need I remind you that you're the one already under arrest? Yo! 
I sense that K is going to be less than forthcoming with this question. Um, sorry about the roughly thing. <sighs> yes, well, now that it's positively drenched in your nasal mucus. Take it off! Don't worry, K. I have a spare. Von one of Von Karma's rules. Always carry a spare Kuva, just in case <laughs> someone uses it as a Kleenex. That's very specific. So I think just carrying a spare one would suffice. <laughs> so here, you can have this one. Oh, that's cute! Um, but Daddy said never take things from a stranger. Ah, it's one of the promises you made in your promise notebook, correct? Yeah, look, see, it's right here on this page. Hmm. All right then, I'm not giving this to you. I'm merely allowing you to borrow it. You can take it home, wash it nice and clean, and then give it back to me next time we meet. Okay, Daddy never said I couldn't borrow things from strangers. <laughs> Way to find the loopholes, Edgeworth. <laughs> now then, Detective Gumshoe. Uh-oh. I believe it is now crystal clear. That you were with little Kay in that hallway. Here's the thing, though. Oh. One of her main rules was not to talk to strangers and not to go with strangers. Not to take things from strangers and not to uh, go with strangers. But here's the thing. This was Detective Gumshoe's first assignment, so how did she know him before that? Right. She wouldn't have. So therefore... Mm, I told you to stop being mean to Gummy! Miles Edgeworth. There's still something you have yet to resolve. I, I wish that Francisca had her own the hold it animation. Or, or some voice. voice. Yeah. yeah. I beg your pardon. You still haven't offered an explanation for why that man would lie to us. That's well. Gummy. Don't tell me you lied for my sake. Hey, don't worry about it, Kay. Everything's gonna be okay. Ah, so that's why. So, what was Detective Gumshoe's motive for lying? If you can't explain that, then you can't call this a perfect investigation. Hmph. <laughs> his reason for lying is very simple. But what? Here is what I believe to be his reason. From simple observation of the detective's actions and his interactions with Kay, it's obvious the detective was lying for the young girl's sake. And this piece of evidence will show you exactly why. Which piece of evidence proves that Detective Gumshoe was lying on account of Kay? Um, Gumshoe was lying on account of Kay because... You actually kind of touched on it already. Was it because of the you can't go with strangers? Mm -hmm. Mr. Faraday, in case promised notebook, how does this explain anything? If you could take a look at this page, it's clearly written that Kay should never take things from a stranger. When Detective Gumshoe heard about that promise, he tried to cover for Kay. What a foolishly foolish fool's... What a foolishly foolish fool's fool of a foolish reason for a fool. That's such a hard sentence. YOW! <laughs> Come here. You lied because of me, didn't you? Because I'm your friend, Kay. That's why. Gummy! At long last, Detective Gumshoe, can you please tell me the whole truth now? Uh, I guess there's no beating you, huh, pal? Okay, okay, I'll spill the goods. I've been staring, standing guard for a while. I was getting really hungry and that snack vending machine was taunting me. <laughs> it's like literally, Hey, Gumshoe, you bitch, can't get a snack from me. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of do that. But all the cash you had on you was five dollars, and that wasn't enough to buy anything, right? That is an outrageously priced vending machine. Like, most vending machines are like a dollar for stuff. Yeah, the one at or my like college- Or 75 cents for chips. The one at my college is like, between a dollar twenty-five and two dollars and fifty cents, depending on the items. Mm -hmm. Most of the items, though, that I would get are like a dollar fifty. Okay. And it's college, so that's some of it. After all, the cheapest item in that machine is a six-dollar pack of Swiss that's rolls. That's the cheapest thing. Yeah, but then like an angel from heaven came, showed up. Okay, if you literally went to Meyer and bought a pack of Swiss rolls, I think it would be four dollars for like four of them. Four packs of two, basically. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Hostess, like... The Hostess the whole Cupcakes! Host. Hostess Cupcakes are great. Oh my gosh. Chocolate flavored. Those are in a vending machine at my college, and it's really dangerous, because they're yes, right in the same building as my classes. Anyhow, we gotta keep Sorry. going. <laughs> I was thinking about sharing a snack with Daddy, so I wanted to buy a Swiss roll, but I only had about a dollar in coins. 
So we pooled my $5 and her $1 together. And bought a pack of Swiss rolls together. But I was worried about breaking one of my promises. So then Gumshoe said... Mr. Faraday's one scary guy when he gets mad. But don't worry, you won't get in trouble if I don't tell, right? Besides, you bought it with me. So you didn't really get it from me, you know? He told me it'd be okay. And he gave me a whole roll to save and give to Daddy. Who knew that Scruffy could be so considerate? Indeed. Detective, I take it that you then sat down on the bench and ate the rolls together? Yeah, we split the other roll and ate it right then. This is- Gumshoe's really nice. Like well, Gumshoe's super sweet. Like, he buys one pack, so like, he was super hungry. He bought a pack. He gave her an entire roll, then split the other roll with her. And he paid $5 of the six for yeah, it. He's no, so Gumshoe, nice. Gumshoe has a heart of gold. The sweet taste of that cake's chocolate. I'll never forget it as long as I live, pal. Anyway. Okay, I believe this also belongs to you. Oh, that's from the balloon I popped. It's bad manners to leave garbage lying around the We're like, by the way, Kay, here's the garbage. <laughs> Throw it away Throw yourself. Throw it away. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I guess I can't blame you for not throwing this one piece away. It was sitting high up on a windowsill where you couldn't even see it. So just this once, I'll forgive you. But that balloon, I wanted to surprise Gummy a little, so I popped it on purpose. But because of me, Gummy dropped his half of the Swiss scroll. <laughs> wow, you really got me there, pal. Whoa, that's a great skill. So I thought maybe I should give Gummy this other roll. And then I saw you picking on Gummy, mister. So you kicked me, is that it? You sure are a feisty one. I'm really sorry, mister. It's alright. I'm perfectly unharmed. But about this Swiss roll, would it be alright with you if I held on to it until Detective Gumshoe was cleared of all charges and free to go? Yeah, sure. Just make sure you give it to Gummy afterwards, okay? Of course, I promise. Now then, I believe we have proven beyond us the shadow of a doubt that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway for the entire duration of his duty, which undeniably proves that Detective Gumshoe could not have committed the double murders. Objection. Objection. Actually, it proves just the opposite, Edgeworth. You've just shown. The Detective Gumshoe is the only one who could have committed the crime. Was she just, like, standing there, like, wait until he says it? Okay, now. No, I'm picturing, like, in Ratatouille when the chef is behind the door, like, staring oh, yeah. at, um, Eclair, eating, like, drinking oh, yeah. the soup, but it's just you, like, objection. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? It's quite rude to eavesdrop, Miss Yu. <laughs> I'm getting lectured on manners. My girl with a passion for whipping people. <laughs> She's got a point. What? How dare you talk back with such insolence? You're wrong, lady. Gummy's not the bad guy. Oh, and what have we here? What's a child doing here in this courthouse? Bailiff, take this child in. What? Miss Callisto, you? That girl is Mr. Faraday's. I know. So what? You think that just because she's the victim's daughter, she gets to just run wild all around the crime scene? I think it's actually quite dangerous for her to speak of nothing of getting underfoot. I suppose you're right, however... As long as we're in agreement on that point, let's get back to the real issue at hand. Now then, Detective, you were in front of the door to d lobby number two the entire time, right? Y yeah, but... You see, isn't it obvious that it could only be the detective? He is the only person who could have gone into the lobby number two at the time of the murder. Ah, I have no counter-argument to that. Don't worry. I've already put in the necessary paperwork for his formal arrest. But the investigation is far from over. Wait, how did she- she's a defense attorney! How did she get the paperwork done? We can't do anything as Phoenix Wright when we're a defense attorney. It's like- It's cause Phoenix Wright's just bad. It's like, you're not supposed to be in the crime scene and well, you was like, old? I'm working with the police to How get old is out. Miss You? She's like- She's 22! Yeah, she should not have the authority then after that. Maybe she's like, infinitely her, smarter than Maybe her. Maybe Gant's her dad. Cause at this point Gant is chief- uh, No, he's- No, he's- He's not chief yet. He's not chief yet? Gant's not chief He's yet. He's like working his way up to it? Yeah, because the SL9 incident, which is what made him chief, yeah. happens after the Mia Fey first case with, yeah. Yeah, with Melissa Emma Foster. Has to, 
How old is Emma Sky in comparison to Francisca and Kay? Um, Emma's, I think, a year younger. Than Francisca. One or two years younger than Francisca. And then Kay's And then like she's like a year five older years than Kay. Younger than... Oh. Okay. But Emma was 14 at the SLM. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I was going to speak with you about that. Don't you think it's reckless to talk to the suspect out in the open without a guard? Ugh, I suppose it is. Well, as someone with more experience in law than you, allow me to share something. Always keep a good eye on a criminal, or you may regret what comes of your negligence. Ooh. Miles, I can't believe you're letting this woman lecture you like this. This is unforgivable as a disciple of the Von Karmas. <laughs> Down, Tigress. Now then, I'll be looking forward to the results of your investigation. So, we're back to square one. Actually, this is our last chance. I can tell if that we fail to solve this case. Detective Gumshoe will be formally charged under all of the circumstantial evidence. This investigation is not over yet. There's still one location we have yet to inspect. It's where Detective Bad and Miss Yu were at the time of the crime. Lobby number one. Also... Mandy, what's his face? Manny Cochin. Manny Cochin. Mandy Cochin is his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm just a creepy guy who probably is a murderer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. So do you still think it's Manny Cochin or do you think it's like Detective Bad? I think, it's, I think it's Detective Bad. I think it's a comedy of errors. A com if that makes any sense. Like a bunch oh. of people are like, whoops! Didn't what? mean for that to happen. Yeah. Well, that and just people making dumb decisions. Like, if Miss Yu went with this guy, maybe that's the reason that, like, Bad was able to go and do stuff. Oh. Or maybe... Well, she did that after the murder, though, happened. That's true. Maybe, though, it was like, let me catch you up to speed on all this stuff. And then she has, like, all the information that we don't have. Oh, but she's, like, in cahoots with But she's Manny. in cahoots? I don't know. Okay, interesting. It's been so long that I'm trying to piece it all together as we speak. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. I think we're going to the last part of the case. Okay. Or, I think we're... This was the middle. I think this is the end part one of two, probably. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this wait case till, is very long. Just wait, till cool. case, just wait till case five. Case five is ridiculously long. In comparison to, like, other fifth cases? It, it's roughly the same length as Rise from the Ashes. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. I was like, is it as long as the one of the Hall of Justice, or...? Oh, it's way longer. Oh, Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.